Let's get something out of the way to start. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet suffer from glaring performance issues. Every reviewer mentions it, it's impossible not to notice, and if you're going to play these games, it's just something you're going to have to get used to. That might be a tall order, but if you can look past those faults, Scarlet and Violet reward you with what may very well be the most all-around solid experience in Pokemon. I'm roughly a third of the way through the story now, so this is not a final verdict, but I'm already impressed by what I've seen of Scarlet and Violet's structure, flow of gameplay, and even on occasion its characters. And note, by the way, that there won't be any big story spoilers here, as I'll be pulling entirely from what I've experienced so far, so consider this a mostly spoiler-free discussion. It's quite remarkable that I'm adapting so well to the gameplay of Scarlet and Violet, because I've never been enthusiastic about open-world games, and thus went into this skeptical that that model would be an appropriate fit for mainline Pokémon. People sometimes seem to overestimate exactly how freeform Pokémon is, because with the distinct exception of Legends Arceus, these games have always been extremely formulaic. Even more than its iconic monsters, Pokémon games are defined by their rigid structures. The gym challenges and evil team plots and encounters with narratively significant legendaries. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, of course. But very often, the connections between those arcs, particularly the ones tying the gym challenge to the rest of the story, are pretty arbitrary. In many of the older generations, you can set your watch by the evil team enacting their plans around the time of the seventh gym. And then there's things like how both Gen 1 and Gen 8 have a big reveal involving the evil team and a secret gym leader. Or how the cataclysmic, world-ending threat of the box legendaries almost always play second fiddle to the player's real ultimate goal of being the best like no one ever was. Pokémon storytelling has never been the most organic, is what I'm saying. And this is where the praise for Scarlet and Violet comes in for acknowledging the series' disparate elements and splitting them up into three progression pads that the player is free to pursue in any order and at their own pace. Well, free to a point, at least. The complete lack of level scaling leads to there being an optimal sequence of major battles from start to finish, and while it's not criticized as much, the geography of Paldea itself restricts the game from feeling like truly free-roam open-world experiences. The great crater in the center of the map effectively forces progression in only one of two directions from the starting area, leaving players with only two real paths that together make a circle up toward the north center of Paldea where most of the game's highest level challenges are located. This is even telegraphed in dialogue, with Nimona and Arvin framing the choice between west or east from the academy as a choice of which of their storylines the player wants to pursue first. Even with that, there is still room to deviate somewhat from the linear level progression, and it's likely that many players will do so inadvertently if they choose only one direction from the academy and continue following it rather than alternating between the two to work on them simultaneously. That second option appears to be the way that the developers intended for players to progress on the three separate main objectives, positioning gyms and team star bases and titan Pokémon in such a way that it's much more feasible to go after all of them as you continue down whichever road you're following, rather than treating them as independent entities to be pursued one at a time. It doesn't feel like a purely open-world setup, but instead more of a hybrid model that allows players to explore a mostly linear sequence of open areas, each of which has at least one major achievement to strive towards as part of the overall story. Opinions will no doubt vary as to the merits of that approach, whether it appeals to more players that way, or whether it's more of a turnoff that the games never fully commit to either strict linear or open world design. One good point about it, though, is that Scarlet and Violet seem particularly well suited to all sorts of interesting challenge runs, because it's enough freedom to tailor playthroughs according to different rule sets, while never being so freeform that players can just skip to the endgame right from the start. It helps, too, that each of the storylines is mechanically distinct, and while some of these segments feel more like tedious busywork than something that's actually entertaining, they are at least more creative concepts than the developers merely sticking half a dozen trainers in a gym and calling it a day. 
Personally, I've been enjoying the game structure, and I look forward to discovering more as its stories continue to unravel. That's another thing, too, about what helps these games stand out. It's sometimes been suggested to me that I could talk about the characters in Pokémon games in the same way that I discuss characters in other RPGs. The trouble with that is, however, that the characters in this series are extremely two-dimensional, with only a handful of exceptions. And that due to limited screen time, most NPCs have to rely on broad, gimmicky character traits to stand out. That's true in Scarlet and Violet as well when it comes to the gym leaders and teachers. But there's enough to the companion characters of each arc, as well as to the leaders of Team Star, to make them at least somewhat intriguing. Team Star may be a veritable breakfast club of delinquent stereotypes, but a bit like Team Skull from the Alola games, they're tapping into a kind of antagonism that younger players especially would find familiar. Certainly more so than organized crime syndicates or eco-terrorists, anyway. In a game that asks the player to discover their own motivation for exploring the world, it's good to have some genuine character moments that feel like they're driving the story forward and fleshing out the world rather than serving simply as flamboyant window dressing for the real draw that is the Pokémon themselves. It's hard to make a call like this when I'm still so early on, but currently, Operation Starfall is looking like the most engaging plotline, even if it suffers from a case of telling and not showing with regard to how disruptive Team Star's behavior actually is. As aside from a single encounter with them early on, there's no indication that these guys are doing anything apart from skipping school and holding themselves up in their respective bases. After that is Victory Road, with its gym challenges being exactly what you'd expect but still serving their purpose well, and then, finally, the Path of Legends. I'd imagine that your enjoyment of this story hinges primarily on how you feel about Arvin. He's not an annoying NPC by any means, but I also can't really say that his motivations speak to me on any deeper level. I'm mostly just sad that the Dilf Professor, who was half the reason I decided to get Violet in the first place, hardly even shows up. I'd much rather have him randomly popping into the story than this walking meme. I digress, however. Everyone now is drawing their own conclusions about Scarlet and Violet, and I'd be interested to read your thoughts down in the comments, particularly how you're liking the game's structure and how well you think it holds up as a mainline Pokémon experience. Like the video and let me know down below. And if you're new to my channel, well, first off, welcome. And second, be sure to subscribe, because I've got more Pokémon content on the way, including a major project in the near future. It'll be something more in the vein of a challenge run than a video essay, but I've got some points to make regarding difficulty in this series that I want to explore, so it should be interesting for me to put that together for you guys and see how that all plays out. I was actually planning to start with the older generations, but as Scarlet and Violet are new and feature a number of unique gameplay elements, I've decided to work with them instead. That'll be coming along hopefully very soon. But for now, if there's enough interest, I'd be happy to share more of my experiences with Scarlet and Violet as I make my way through the rest of the game. Thank you all for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons as always for helping to support the channel. Au revoir!